All right, so you came here maybe because of the title, thinking, huh, what is this guy going to say about Netflix? Well, here I am today to provide you with a solution to your growing cost of streaming services, the Zima board. So with that said, let's dive straight into the video. And hello to PCBWay.com. PCBWay is a service that allows you to create custom PCB prototypes, flexible PCBs, 3D printing, and much more. And when comparing PCBWay to other PCB printing services, you might notice that PCBWay automatically upgrades all of their standard PCBs to TG150-164 free. They also provide you with a quick order PCB section to help you pick and design your PCBs nice and quickly. PCBWay also automatically gives new members $5 for free, so I say that's a pretty nice bonus. PCBWay is also currently having a special event that comes with special prizes. For those of you who are DIYers, this is going to be right up your alley. So if you have a custom project which includes a PCB design and that you've made yourself all by yourself, you can submit it into this contest. And by participating in this contest, you will automatically get a free Raspberry Pi Pico. And if chosen as a winner, even better prizes such as cash and Raspberry Pis, which would be pretty valuable now days so yeah if you're into pcbs 3d printing cnc etc pcb way has it covered so first of all what in the world am i talking about well, let me just slow down so with the current increasing prices of streaming services many people shout out tons and tons of money on unnecessary content that they really don't watch this is why i propose a solution to you the 150 dollars demo board right here has enough power to run your own media server with an interface just like netflix disney plus hulu all of your favorite streaming services it's going to look just like that and this demo board doesn't make any noise and it does not use much power sure you could even accomplish a similar thing with a raspberry pi but this guy right here will have a bit more power to do what we're what we want to do in this video so let's start out with what the Zimma board is. So the Zimma board is an x86 single board computer. It's a single board computer just like the Raspberry Pi is, but the Pi 4 or the Raspberry Pis, they have ARM processors, whereas this is an x86 processor, which is the same type of processor that you would find in your normal laptop or desktop PC. So, the, But the Zimma board comes in around in a few different variants. So mine right here is the middle, is the middle tier with a quad-core Intel Celeron N345 with 4 gigabytes of RAM and a 32 gigabyte EMMC onboard storage. There is a higher tier version with the same CPU but 8 gigabytes of RAM and there is also a lower tier version with 2 gigabytes of RAM and only a 2 core CPU. So for this project I would probably recommend upgrading to at least the version I have like the middle tier because I really don't think it's worth sacrificing performance when you can just pay a little bit more and get two full extra cores and two more gigabytes of RAM. And if you really want to have a powerhouse, go right ahead and upgrade to the top tier. You're gonna have eight gigabytes of RAM, which is gonna be a lot of RAM for what we're doing, a good amount. So now that we have that out of the way, let me explain what my plan is for this project. So for this project, we're going to be using Jellyfin to give us a Netflix-like experience. Jellyfin is a self-hostable media server just like Plex and MB. It's completely open source, free, and overall a great product. So I'm going to be using Ubuntu Server 22.04 as my like base operating system. I'm going to install it on the internal EMMC drive of the SIMA board to complete the project. And then on top of Ubuntu, I will be installing Jellyfin. And the Zimmer board actually does include SATA ports, as you can see right here, which will allow us to add an external drive to have extra media storage for our content, which is spectacular. So with that said, let's dive into the installation process. So first of all, you will want to head over to Ubuntu's website and you're going to want to choose Ubuntu 22.04 server and download it to your PC. I guess technically you could go with 22.10, but 22.04 is going to be supported for longer because it is an LTS release. So why not just go with a little bit longer version, more stable version? So I'm going to be going with that one. And once downloaded, we will be using a tool such as Belen Etcher to flash it to our USB drive. Choose flash from the file and choose the Ubuntu ISO. Then select your USB drive as the target device and hit flash. Now enjoy watching that status bar slowly increase. 
Okay, so once that's over, take the USB stick out of your main PC, plug it into one of the two USB 3.0 ports on the Zimmer board. Plug in the display and power cable into your Zimmer board. And when your device is booting up, hit the escape key to access the BIOS. Once in the BIOS, go over and select the USB drive as the boot device, and the Ubuntu server installation should pop up, and you can run through the installation. I'll let you guys handle this on your own, since it's not too hard of a process, and I, I, I think you guys can figure out how to do this on your own. So after everything installed, after we have Ubuntu installed on the internal eMMC drive of the Zimmo board, I would recommend accessing the Zimmo board from your main computer over an SSH connection because it will make things a lot easier. So to do this, type in IP ADDR into the command line to see what your IP address is. Take note of that IP address and head over to your PC's terminal slash command line depending on your operating system. Type in SSH your username. In my case, it's going to be Luke F. Renner at the IP address that you just took note of a little bit ago. So for me, it might be something like 192.168.0.45. So I typed it in and then I hit enter. And once you hit enter, you're going to want to type in yes to accept the new connection. And then it's going to ask you for your password. So type in your password of your Ubuntu install. Voila! Now we can configure our new server directly from our PC. We don't need any more modern connection or anything like that. We can just run the Zim board headlessly now without having to connect it to any external display. So we'll go on to installing Jellyfin on our P on our Zim board. So head over to this link at on the on your browser. It will be linked in the description, like always. And we're gonna we're so we're going to be using Ubuntu, so we'll, we will be following the commands for Ubuntu. So to do this, copy over the commands un under the title Ubuntu Repository. Just one by one, copy them over into the terminal and let it install itself. A pretty easy installation. Once the installation is complete, type in sudo systemctl restart jellyfin, and we're about ready to access our new media server. So in your browser, type in your IP address, followed by colon 8906. Let me repeat that. Type in your IP address into your browser, followed by colon 8906. This should pop up you straight up into the Jellyfin web user interface. Then you can follow the prompt to set it up as it's not too hard of a process. For now, you can go ahead and skip adding a media library. We will complete that in a little bit. Okay, so now that we are in Jellyfin, what should we attempt next? Uh, add more storage. So for most people, the 32 gigabytes of onboard storage on the Zim board won't be enough to hold all of their media. And here is another reason why the Zim board is so great. It has onboard SATA ports. This means that you can connect your SSDs or HDDs directly to the Zim board without requiring any type of USB connection or anything like that. So for me personally, I will be connecting this 500 gigabyte 2.5 inch HDD that I will be using. And as for the cable, I'm going to be using the SATA Y cable from Zenimo board themselves, which is intended to be used for two drives, but I will just be using it for one. And you don't need this exact cable, of course, you could use some other SATA cable as well. However, if you were wanting to connect two drives to this board, definitely check this cable out because it does that in a really nice way. So, once your drive is connected to the Zimmer board, you will need to restart your Zimmer board. And once your Zimmer board is booted back up, SSH straight back into it, and we'll need to do a bit of configuration. So, firstly, let's make sure that our drive is connected to our Zimmer board by typing in LSBLK into our terminal. 
And as you can see by the pop-up, my drive right here shows up as dash dev dash SDA. So that is my drive, my 500 gigabyte HDD. So we're looking good. And now we need to mount the disk to be able to be able to use it because currently it's it's connected to our system, but we really can't access it. So we want to mount it in an area where we, we are going to be storing our media. So let's head over to the dash TMP or the dash temporary folder. So once in the dash TMP folder, let's create a media folder inside of that folder. So type in MKDIR MKDIR media. And that will create ourselves a media folder. And once created, we can begin to mount our disk to it. So type in sudo mount your disk name. And in my case, it's going to be dash dev dash SDA. So again, sudo mount dash dev dash SDA, then the folder name, which is dash media. So hit enter and our disk should be in that folder by now. So basically now that folder will be using the storage from your external disk, not your internal drive. So that folder should have access to however much storage your external disk holds. So yeah, so it's pretty awesome. So feel free to create internal folders inside of this main folder, such as movies, TV shows, and music to hold their respective media. So let's jump over into Jellyfin real fast to check out and see if this new folder structure works. So you can you can click this button right here on Jellyfin to add a new media library. I'm going to I'm going to be making this my movies folder. So then click on the little plus button to find the folder. First hit the back button, then look for the TMP folder and then the media folder and finally the movies folder. Voila, it is working, which is just beautiful. So now we have that working, but we don't have any media in our system. Well, and now it's time to add our media. So to do this, we're going to be using a nice tool named FileZilla to transfer our files over to our Zima board. So this tool is available on all of the major operating systems, including Linux, as I am on Ubuntu right now. So install this tool onto your PC and launch it. And once in the application, you will need to enter your Zimba board credentials. So that so in the section at the top that says host, type in SFTP followed by a colon and then two slashes. Then enter your Zimba board's IP address. Okay, we got that. And after that, enter your board's username and then your board's password. And you can leave the port section blank and then right away hit quick connect accept the pop-ups and bam, we have access to our server's file system. Absolutely beautiful. So like, lo so locate the media folder we created a little bit earlier inside of temporary. And then begin copying over your media files from your PC onto your server. And it really is that easy. And then to see if it pops up in Jellyfin, you can go you can go back to the library section in the Jellyfin settings in the web browser and hit scan all libraries. By doing this, it will see if any media has been updated and then add it to your library. Looky here, it worked. Jellyfin will also put any metadata such as cover art and actors inside of your movie thing um, just to make it look more professional, which yeah. So Jellyfin is a really, really neat system. And there is a lot more that you could do. You can configure and stuff in Jellyfin. But this is kind of where I'm going to leave it off for this video. And if you would be interested in more, let me know. And also check out Tech Hut's series about Jellyfin. He goes really in depth with configuring and setting up and everything like that. So if you want to see more, check out his channel. Yeah, so overall, now you have basically created a self-hosted streaming platform, and I think that's pretty cool. So the Zimbor seems like a great device to do this, as it's small, doesn't use much power, and it's really a nice looking board too. So let me know down below what you think about this project, and whether you would attempt it yourself. So I hope this video was helpful too. Yeah, and with that said, thanks for watching.